Hi everyone, this is Jo. I'm back from my week's training on the East Coast with many insights, many realizations, many new tools, lots of lessons, um, and lots of ideas about where I can take all these new skills. So there's lots bubbling under the surface at the moment. Not all of it has dropped yet, so I'm not ready to share all of it. I'm not actually ready to share most of it, but um, I, um, I am ready to share one thing I learned at the training. So this training was really intensive. It was uh, five days. Most of the days were 12 hours. I think all of the days were at least 12 hours. One day was 17 hours. We didn't get the, the um, two friends I was staying with, the three of us, we didn't get back to our accommodation until somewhere after 2.30 in the morning. And then we, we did a 12 hour day after that. And, you know, my younger days of partying, that would have probably been okay. But these days I choose to not do those things. I choose to value myself and my sleep and my health habits really strongly. And so I don't put myself under that kind of uh, demand or um, tension these days. So to be in a situation where, I mean, I could have walked out. I could have walked out and refused to be there, but I would have let other people down. And I would have let myself down. So I chose to be there. However, the boundaries around that was set by someone else, which was really interesting process to let go of some control. I do tend to have a pretty tight reign of control on my life, my boundaries, um, things like that. So it was interesting to let go of some of that control. And the other really interesting thing was the next day, so after the 17 hour day, the next day doing a 12 hour day was possibly a 13 hour day actually, by the time we got out, we did a lot of processes. So there was a lot of um, counseling other people uh, and putting other people through processes. And I've always been really aware that what I can do is when, when tired, when stressed, whatever, and I'm with clients, I can take my shit and I just park it. I just put it on a shelf up behind me I dissociate from it, I let it go temporarily, and um, I am present with my client. I've done that for a very, very long time now. I've been able to do that. And it doesn't mean I don't pick my stuff up, I definitely do. So to do that permanently is not healthy, but to do it temporarily um, is a really great skill to have, and it's necessary when you're caring for other people. So to be able to do that is wonderful. What I realized that day when I was exhausted and I was working with people, I would park my shit up there on the shelf and be present with the person in front of me, despite having had half hours sleep the night before. I had one half an hour of sleep, 30 minutes of sleep. And then I did 12, 13 hour day processing, learning and supporting other people. And at the end of that, I was beyond exhausted, but I got through it. And I realized that I have this ability to park my shit. I will do it for clients. Guess what? I don't do it for myself. That was massive. It was such a massive realization that I choose. It's a conscious choice I make to park my shit because I value my clients. And yet I don't give myself the same value. I don't seem... I have not been able or felt like I was able or given myself permission to say, look, you're exhausted, park your shit, get out of your own way, get through the day and, you know, choose, choose calm, choose happy and do it. Instead, what I've done is what most people do and I've stayed in feeling rotten. I've stayed in feeling exhausted. I've really let myself, you know, stew in this um, unhealthy stuff that doesn't serve me and just take it all on and the other thing I realized is that I don't park my shit for my kids I have little kids they have high needs at times they're very demanding at times I love them terribly but I realized that day I will park my shit and my mood and whatever else my stresses my thoughts for my clients and I have not been doing that for my own children and that was a pretty big uh, realization. It was a bit of a slap to the face. 
and excuse my language, but I was just like, what the fuck are you doing? You grumble at your kids, you put your stress on your kids, you put your worries on your kids when you're feeling tired and stressed. When you don't have the inner resources, you justify yelling at them, grumbling at them, blaming them. Guess what? Not their problem. Not their problem at all. I need to park my shit. If I'm tired, I'm stressed, I'm worried about something, I need to park my shit. It's not their problem. So out of this enormously difficult endurance process I went through over a couple of days, I was, I was resentful and angry and all sorts of, all sorts of feelings came up. But at the end of it, I was really glad I went through it because I realized that I have the ability under very difficult circumstances to park my shit when I choose to, when it's something I value. And I need to value myself and I need to value my kids as much as I value my clients. I love all you guys. You guys are awesome. I love my clients. But guess what? I value myself and my kids just as much, if not more. So my, um, my uh, encouragement to you is to have a look at yourself, basically, and have a look in what situations you're able to park your shit. In what situations do you choose to go, oh, I've got to get my shit together, that stuff has to wait. And in what situations do you not do that? What do you really value? What do you show you value by your behavior? And what choices do you make? Because if we can do it once, that just proves it is a choice. And you have the power to choose something else. I have the power to choose something else. And you have the power to choose something else. So that is my first lot of thoughts from my training. There is many, many, many more to come. That's the, that's the nugget I'm gonna leave you with today though. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your uh, support, attention, listening, learning. I appreciate it all. I love you all heaps. Goodbye.